Well, hello, my name is Glenn Dyer, and you are watching a dire situation. Today I'm seeing Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, this is the, uh, God, fifth movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. First one in 60 years. Mm-hmm. We're really looking for that money, aren't we, Disney? Don't know why your live-action remake seems to be doing just fine. Think you could invest money into something original and cool, but yeah, whatever, whatever. Keep doing what you want. People still love you. Um, so yeah, what did I think of the first ones? So let's get into that first movie, cinematic classic. One of the few reasons ever to give any kind of credit to Disney's live-action studios at all. Best thing they've made in a decade. Second movie, I, I like how the Octopus Man Davy Jones looks, but uh, made a whole bunch of really stupid choices. Like, I don't know why it continued Will Turner's storyline. I, that, that, that's, it, it, his story was over, it felt superfluous. Uh, third movie was so bad, it was really bad. It, it was almost like it really wanted to be uh, um, uh, Return of the King, but uh, it couldn't, because... Like, that's not, that's not how the series was set up to be. It doesn't work. Uh, fourth movie, didn't see it because third one was so bad. And now we're on the fifth one. So, uh, you know, I just, like, from a concept standpoint, I don't think this could be that bad. I mean, as far as I know, like, the Turner shit is over by now. I hope we don't see those two again. I mean, I have nothing against Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley, but, like, literally, they have no reason to be there. Their storyline ended in the first fucking movie. Um, but, 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 like, uh, but yeah, this one, supposedly, the plot is just, there's this bad guy, um, who, you know, is alive because of magic shit, and, uh, uh, he wants revenge on Jack Sparrow, and Jack's gonna get out of it using his wacky ways. It's not such a bad idea, you know. Simple enough. Uh, the only qualms I do have about it is uh, a lot of the design work here. Um, I, I do love the aesthetic of Pirates of the Caribbean. I do like uh, just the gross, like, sea quality of everything. Um, you know, the first movie where everyone was like the, looks like bones and stuff when, in the moonlight. That was really cool. Uh, CGI looks a little dated today, but still, like, the design element itself looks great. And the second movie, too, that, that might be even better on that sense. Just, uh, uh all the barnacles and, like, um some people are merged together and merged into the walls and stuff. Like, it looks really cool on everyone. Uh, so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm usually a big fan of that, but in this movie, uh, just from, like, trailer shots and stuff, it, it doesn't it seem a touch, uh, redone? Like, for instance, the main bad guy... Now, correct me on this if nobody else fought this, but I, I can't believe that nobody else in the world even suspected this the first time they saw that trailer. Doesn't this guy look exactly like Will Turner's dad? Like, literally, when he came up, I thought, oh, is that Will Turner's dad? Like, he looks so much like him. The pale face, the hair, like, going every, uh, matting everywhere and stuff. Like, if you look closely, he doesn't have, like, the barnacles and stuff, but other than that, he looks a his design looks very, very similar to him. Uh, that, mm, I mean, like, there's many different things you can do with the aesthetic of the sea, you know. Like, he could have uh, greenery on him or something. He could have, I don't know, you already did fish parts, but, like, um, how about, like, um, bones coming out of different areas or something? Or, or uh, 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 how about, like, deep sea things so he, like, glows with, like, neon or stuff, you know? You, you could do a few different things still, even though you've, 
you've come this far, it seems weird to have not only, like, um, a very similar aesthetic of a different character, but, like, very similar body type and everything else, too, because he looks so much like him. I seriously thought that that must be the plot of this movie. Will Turner's dad comes back and he wants something with Jack Sparrow, and I have no idea what that could be, but he does. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then there's the other things, like, uh, they've been really showing this, uh, decaying shark and stuff. I'm like, the first movie was about people who were, like, just bones. So what's the difference? He has a little bit more meat on him? Like, this seems kind of... I hate to say it, lazy. Like, they're just doing the same thing over again. The effect itself is pretty cool, uh, sure, but, like, I, I'm talking design-wise. It, it's derivative of the older movies. Uh, so I'm worried that it's not going to be aesthetically, um, aesthetically pleasing, like the first two were. Uh... But I don't know, story-wise, it could be refreshing enough. This is supposedly the last of the series, just like, um, Furious 7 and Furious 8 were the last of their series. Both times. But, um, yeah, it's probably gonna be the last one for a few years, at least, so, you know, we can, we can get some peace on that. Well, uh, let's get to it. And I'm back, so, uh, apparently, it wasn't just corpses this time, like, it's not, it wasn't just waterlogged corpses that are reanimated, like in the first movie, this time they're burnt waterlogged corpses. That, that's, that's their only distinction, honestly. <laughs> like, it, the effect looked cool, like, some of them were, like, literally just, like, hands and a foot. <laughs> Kind of animated like Rayman style, the rest of their body's not there at all. Like, it's kind of cool. Um, but, like, aesthetically different from the other movies? No, not even slightly. So, let's get to the biggest fucking problem with this. You <sighs> just had to do it. You had to not only just re bring back the fucking Will and Elizabeth Turner shit. No, no, no. You went one step beyond that. You rebooted the Will and Elizabeth Turner bullshit. My fucking God. Literally. Will Turner's son and this very smart girl are on the run... And they involve themselves with pirates, and they get together in the end, and, my fucking god, literally, they, I didn't think that was fucking possible. <laughs> How do you reboot a subplot? Do you guys know, no way to kick off an ad a pirate adventure without having a bunch of very boring people <laughs> tag along? And here's the thing. Um, I kind of get their purpose. It, it provides two things. For one thing, it actually gets Captain Jack off of his ass, because by himself, he's very funny, but there's nobody, like, to bounce off of. Um, so it gets him off his ass, and it, it provides somebody to react to all the silly things that happen. I get that. The thing is, there's people on his crew who, f who can fulfill that role. There's people on other crews that join them that can fulfill that role. There is a million creative ways to fill that role, besides getting two of the most boring fucking people on the fucking planet have their own romance plot um, alongside, <laughs> alongside the movie. Like, seriously. Like, I did not think you could make the chemistry between Kieran Knightley and Orlando Bloom actually looks spicy by comparison. These two are so bland, so lifeless. It's unbelievable. Utterly unbelievable. Um, and, yeah, so that's it. So, 
<laughs> so design wise, nothing that good. Um, subplot wise, fuck you up the ass. Uh, how about main plot wise? How is it? Well, it has moments. It has moments. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, the whole long time revenge thing is kind of, kind of cool. Um, I r honestly wish the villain had a little more personality to him. It was basically this, this Spaniard guy, and uh, he met Jack one time, and Jack got him killed. So I can understand him being really mad, but like he goes on this big really, really watered-down Captain Ahab thing. It's just, I only care about killing Sparrow. And, yeah. It, it just... Well, like, when you compare it to someone like Davy Jones, who I admit's not, like, the height of, like, um... <laughs> he's not exactly Shakespearean, but... You know, at the very least, he has more motivations than just, I want to kill Jack Sparrow. You know, he has things like, uh, uh, he, he has, uh, uh, I believe he had, like, a failed romance thing that happened. Um, you know, he has this complex, well, semi-complex, uh, uh, in, um, thing going on, um, relating to the fact that he's stuck at sea forever and stuff. Uh, which they totally rip off in this movie. They literally die when they set foot on land. Ooh. And they can walk underwater and on top of water. So it's like the fir the bad guys from the first movie times two. Ooh. Uh. And it, it, it just feels like really, really watered down compared to the first one. I, I mean, um. You know what this feels like? If it weren't for the fact that the special effects look really good, and it weren't for the fact that uh, Johnny Depp is in it, I would almost suspect this was a made-for-TV movie, just in terms of uh, plot layout and uh, the events that go on and everything like that. Uh, but there are some fun action scenes uh, um, in there, some creative stuff. They don't make much sense, but that's not really the point, but, you know. They're fun, and that's cool. Uh, and that's probably the only possible way I could recommend this, is to watch some of the fun action scenes. Because, uh, yeah, especially towards the end, though. Towards the end. Um, what happens at the very end is so... It's a huge cop-out, I have to say. It's basically, like, one simple thing that they seemingly come up with on the spot and it gets them out of literally all their problems. And I'm not sure how they plan on continuing that. I know they are continuing that. I saw on IMDb they have a Pirates of the Caribbean 6 on the way already. Um, it, but, like, literally at the end of this movie, they fucking took the magic out of everything. I'm not going to say how they did it, but, like... Literally, as established, there is no more magic in this world anymore. So, I don't know, are they going to do a stupid prequel or something? Like, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, maybe they'll force themselves to do something different, or they'll just ignore it. I don't know. But yeah, I can, like, barely recommend this on DVD, and... That's about it. No need to see it in theaters. There's nothing that, like, worthy about it. Um, Paul McCartney's in one scene. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's not. There's just not much to this, honestly. I uh, can't wait for the next one. Until next time, I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching A Dire Situation.